I'd like to see the view from up in those clouds. You will soon enough. We all will. I'll take your copy, lad. So, people find intrigue in the news of the Lord's return? Well, people want to hear about the end of the world, sir. But how can see the God supremely good who heaps his favors on the sons he loves, yet scatters evil with his large a hand? A God came down to lift our stricken race. He visited the earth and changed it not. The children have asked for you. Will you take them some bread with butter and cheese? Yes, my dear. And what are you thinking about today, Mr. Miller? Voltaire. Voltaire believes there is a supreme power. But he does not accept that God has anything to do with us personally. I survived that battle at Plattsburgh, Lucy, and I have to know why. And Voltaire's words provide no answers, then. God reached down to the battlefield to meddle in the lives of men? It goes against reason, William. It's not logical. If you had seen the shells in the blood that day, you'd know the only explanation for our victory was some sort of divine intervention. And what of the men and boys who died around you? Was it the hand of God that put them in the grave? I don't have the answer for that, Abner. All I know is I should be dead and I am not. Perhaps the Bible has an answer. Come now, Mr. Miller. The Bible is an ancient fairy tale. You have no proof of its validity. You don't have proof to the contrary. Both views require a leap of faith. Surely one demands as much attention as the other. So now an ancient text is your authority on all things? It just may have the answers I seek. Well, I'll tell you what I seek. Another pint. Abner has fallen ill. Oh. So they have asked me to read the sermon. And your response was? 
This is what I get for speaking in front of Mother. I told her that I would next read the sermon when Ella Hugh was away. She must have told one of the elders. Indeed, all parental instructions, unless enforced by becoming examples, will expose not only the truths taught, but the parents themselves. Many remained hardened, thoughtless of God who created them and of Jesus who bled to redeem them. Be not deceived, beloved parents, if you would train up your children in the way they should go. You must not merely instruct, but your actions must course. Course. Your actions must correspond to God's calling on your heart. his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving For kindness, I am the Lord, your God, your Savior. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall I he appear the second for you. And if I go, I will come again. Little one? What is it? The baby bird is dead. My sweet child. There, there. It's going to be all right. No. It's not. Come. Let us lay this gentle creature to rest. Papa. I don't want to die. Oh, my precious one. Oh. You will yet live for many, many years. But each of us must one day pass from this earth. Aren't you afraid of that? No, not anymore. For I have found a friend in Jesus. August 16th, 1818. Now, after two years of study, I am satisfied that many of the prophetic promises in the Bible have been fulfilled. I must wonder then, why not the promise of his second coming? Back to Daniel's vision, are we? Well, speak up so the whole family can hear. Then I heard one saint speaking. How long shall the vision concerning the sanctuary and the host be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's a long time to wait in Daniel's day. More than that, I think. The sanctuary here refers to the earth, and the sanctuary refers to the earth, and the 
cleansing must be the cleansing of the earth after the second coming of Christ. If each day represents one year. William, what is it? Christ is coming. The glorious appearing, yes. Someday, our blessed hope. Well, Lucy, you do not understand. If each of Daniel's days is one year, and then the 2,300 days will be 2,300 years until the second coming of Christ. And the time period begins at 457 BC, as indicated in Daniel 9, and confirmed by historians, then that brings us to 1843. Christ is coming. My savior from Plattsburgh is coming. 1843. William. William, my love, come to bed. The Bible holds the answer to the timing of our Savior's return. God's word has lasted these many centuries. It will still be there in the morning. Can you believe what the Lord has shown us? Indeed. I shall never again doubt the faithfulness of Scripture. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What have they hit? I'm unsure. Whatever it is, it will not move. The ground is as stubborn as the man who holds the title. Lucy, I have explained my position. The Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, they all believe that Christ will return at the end of the millennium foretold in Revelation. As if we could usher in a thousand years of peace on our own. If these many years of studying the Bible have shown me anything, it's that Christ will return to cleanse the earth at the beginning of the thousand years, not at their end. This must go beyond just our family. You must tell others, William. I'm no theologian. Nor has anyone asked me to be the watchman. Is that so? Lucy, I'm a gentleman farmer. I shall soon be 50. I'm too old to take on such a challenge. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I shall make a covenant with God. I shall speak if I am asked. Well, it's your choice. Are you the rock or are you the plow? And how long will it be before someone steps forward and asks to hear your wisdom? To what do we owe this unexpected visit? Uh, the pastor of our Baptist church has been called away. So mother and father were hoping you'd speak in his place tomorrow. They felt you could minister on the prophecies we've been studying in the Bible. not the 
original. Nor has anyone asked me to be the watcher. Are you the rock, or are you the plow? And how long must it take before someone... I shall make a covenant with you. I will speak if I am asked. No! God, no! I cannot preach. I am not qualified, nor am I a watchman. I beg you, do not put this burden upon my shoulders. Send someone else. <laughs> and I made you a promise. How can I do less now? Can I deny the only one who has ever truly forgiven me my failings, who has saved me from myself? I cannot. As we know, there is much evidence in Daniel's vision that the cleansing of the sanctuary is symbolic of Christ's return to cleanse our suffering earth, which we have ravaged with war and sullied with sin. But the proof is strong that Daniel's vision began 457 years before Christ. Now, take 457 from 2,300 and you are left with 1,843 years after Christ, when the vision will be fulfilled. The conclusion must be that sometime about 1843, our Savior Jesus Christ will come to take us home. I think your brother-in-law has gone mad. My dear friends and family, are you prepared for this great and important event? Are you ready for Jesus to return? Here. Here is strong evidence that the time is not far off. Remember the old world. They thought Noah was a maniac, but the flood came. Be warned. Fly to the ark. Take refuge in the beautiful promise of Jesus Christ who said, I will come again. What I say today, I hope that we can call each other friends. Because I have found a friend in Jesus. Must you really be off again tomorrow? Yes, to Exeter. Hmm. When will you be back? I will pack provisions, but I want you to rest and take proper care. It will be so. Are you disappointed in me? How could I be? You are answering your calling. I sometimes wish things were different. 
soon our Savior will return. How different heaven will feel. If we have the correct understanding of the 70 weeks, that a day represents a year, and the vast majority of Christian expositors agree on this point, including the great physicist Sir Isaac Newton, then the conclusion is unavoidable. The vision of Daniel's 2300 years will be fulfilled about 1843. No. We we cannot serve two masters. We, ca we cannot love this present evil world and at the same time serve God. While we may flatter ourselves for being righteous, and I'm as guilty of this as any man, we may soon learn to our everlasting shame that we are wretched, poor, and blind. Oh, Brother Miller. Brother Miller, Joshua Hines. I sent a letter last month inviting you to my church in Boston. Ah, hello, Brother Hines, Joshua Hines. Well, I, I've, I've preached temperance from liquor and abolition of slavery, but never has my flock heard a message such as yours. How soon can you make it to Boston? Two weeks? Boston? Very well. We'll make it three. <laughs> and the good pastor here knows my background. You want me to come to Boston? Chardon Street, the 8th. Deliver the message that you preached here today. But I'm just a farmer. Well, a farmer with a message that must be heard. Uh, we will await your arrival on the 8th. Who is that gentleman? That's Joshua V. Himes. He's a force to be reckoned with. He found his voice lobbying for temperance and almost single-handedly organized the abolitionists of Boston. You know his church? Aye, aye, the Chardon Street Chapel. Oh, it's a sight to see. Calvinists and dunkers. Muggletonians and agrarians, Quakers mixed with Unitarians and philosophers, they all come to seize their moment. It's a place where people come to preach, pray, and protest. It looks like you're going to the big city, Brother Miller. events have come to pass, should we not also expect the fulfillment of his greatest promise? And so in conclusion, I believe the Bible is clear. Jesus will return in but four short years. <laughs> even better than the morning service, Brother Miller. <laughs> yes, good, you rest. Tomorrow they'll be back to hear some more. The power of your message cannot be denied. It is not my power, Joshua, nor my message. It is God's truth delivered through a humble mouthpiece. Yet how thrilling the message that comes out of that mouth. <laughs> Papa says you're from the Bull of 1812. A shell exploded no further from me than your mother. I thought certainly it was my end. Aye. But when the smoke had cleared, I was spared by the power of a loving God. Did that really happen? Well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I'm afraid. <laughs> Forgive my daughter her impertinence. It's as true as I sit here before you. And the next truth you shall hear is that bedtime has come. Say goodnight to Father Miller and your papa. Good night. Good night. So, you really believe this doctrine which you preach? 
I was lost, and now I'm found. If he can save me, Joshua, he can save anyone. And why hide your light under the bushel of tiny hamlets? Must Baltimore, Rochester, Philadelphia, even New York, indeed, the 17 million souls of these United States not be inspired with the same hope? To, and what of the rest of the world? I've labored hard these past years, and I've seen a great many converted to God's truth. But I'm looking for help. I want help. On the strength of your conviction, I am willing to lay all I have on the altar of God to help you. Only answer me this. Will you stand right at my side if I take this on? Indeed I will. Then prepare for the campaign. If Christ is to come in a few short years, there is no time to lose in spreading the word. We shall speak in thunder tones. Doors will open in every city, and the good news will spread to the ends of the earth. For it is here, Brother Miller, that I begin to help you. I am just an old farmer, but the scriptures have become my delight. The insights from the book of Daniel and Revelation that we discuss today are the fruits of many years of my own study. And yet I think it is important for you to know that I am not alone in my convictions. Many others across this country now believe in these very truths. Our message is the same. For it is plain in the pages of God's word for all to read. And it is delivered with urgency because, my dear friends, the time till Christ's return is very short. Yet focus not on a simple day or hour. For while these are near, so is Christ. Know him first. Seek him first. Let us love one another. For love is from God. And those who love were born of God and know God. God shall wipe away all tears. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for those things are passed away. Ellen, you must go to bed. Father, just a few moments more. You need your rest, my dear. Come, Ellen. Let's pray. Tomorrow you will be stronger. Every morning before I open my eyes, I pray that this will be the day that I will forget about the accident. I see the morning light and it all returns. I promise you, my dear, our Heavenly Father has not forgotten you. I long for the day of what Father Miller spoke of in church. No more pain. I've never heard Jesus described as a healer before. I've heard of his wrath and his judgment, but I've never... His healing, so beautiful. <laughs> I miss the old Miller. His eyes are filled with heaven now. And his mouth won't stop speaking about it. He doesn't drink anymore. Which I suppose leaves more for all of us. Now, who'd have thought a country farmer would become a justice of the peace and then start a religious revolution? Miller's hardly a maverick. Barnaby Larson's just returned from Britain, and he says that this doomsday idea is on every tongue in England, and it's spreading throughout Europe. Don't say. Tis true. This notion of a second coming is heard as far away as Africa and India. Yes, and the alchemists thought they could turn iron into gold. Just because there are believers does not make it so.
1,843 years after Christ, when the vision shall be fulfilled. As persuasive as you were today, our reach is not far enough. Joshua, you have the enthusiasm of a young man. It is both invigorating and irritating all at once. Inquiries pour in from every city up and down the eastern seaboard. I mean, you could preach in every church from here to the Florida Territory. Please bury me in Lowhampton next to my maple grove. Twice a day, still it would not fill the need. And see to it that my wife is provided for until the day of judgment. Well, the next step is expansion through the printed word. Publication will reach not just one set of ears, but countless eyes per page. We shall amplify your voice. And do not say, but I am a simple farmer. But I am a simple farmer. Who asked for help? Well, I had no idea it would be like this. The papers have heaped abuse of every sort upon your labors. Now we shall answer back, but on our own terms. I'm a tired old man. And I'm the owner of a printing press. <laughs> about father's message. Let me see. Pride goeth before the fall. We must not let our heads swell with our own self-importance. Are those words from the Bible? Those are words from your mother. And unto 2,300 days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mr. Miller and those who listen to him suffer from a grand delusion. They claim that Jesus will return by a certain date. Yes, it's not the first time the end of the world has been prophesied by a fool, nor will it be the last. I fear, if the date passes, that a shout of infidelity will arise from the unbelievers and lead many of you astray. You see, the world is not going to end in a few short years. No, but it will end. And when it does, are you prepared, sinner? Will you stand before the wrath of a holy God as he looks upon the deeds behind which you cower and shout, depart from me, ye that works iniquity? Then shall the hellfire lap at the heels of those who turned away because of Miller's ideas. Oh, so much hotter the flames for him. Please forgive my iniquities against your name and rescue me from the evil one. What must I do to truly be saved? Mother! Have mercy. Mercy upon my wretched soul. Please forgive my iniquities against your name and rescue me from the evil one. What must I do to truly be saved? Ellen, my darling, what is it? What's the matter? What if I have been led astray, Mother? Why would you say that? I am so afraid. Mother, the preacher said such bad things about Father Miller. Don't you listen to any of that. But I heard. We all did. We were in a house of worship. 
There was no comfort there. Mother says that you were quite distraught last night. I was taken with such fear. Brother Stockman, I know that you believe in Father Miller's teachings. Indeed, I do. As do many other Methodist ministers. When Father Miller shares the Advent hope. His urgency is tempered with love. Yet now all I can hear are the ministers who speak of burning in hell forever. What hope is there for me, for any of us, if our Heavenly Father is a tyrant who delights in eternal torment? The very agony of your mind is indication of God's Holy Spirit at work in your heart. Our God does not rejoice in your destruction. Nor is it his nature to condemn, but to seek that which is lost. How can I be so sure? Go free, Helen. Go free, trust in Jesus, for he will not turn his back on any true seeker. Thank you, Brother Stockman. Do not thank me, Ellen. Thank the Lord Jesus. And share the Advent message with others. Elder Himes and Father Miller have announced a conference in Boston. Does Elder Himes know that Papa's sick? We sent him a letter. Greetings, friends! <laughs> well, should know. He cannot travel, Joshua. He cannot travel. No, 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 of course not. Typhoid is serious. It's very serious. I know you have both put great effort into this occasion. It's the first time we will all be together in the same place with common purpose. Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, all understanding the Advent is near. So you shall meet them, and then you will return and tell William all about the conference. I would like to see him, and just to give him a word of encouragement. Yeah. Well, hello, dear friend. How are you feeling today? Uh, not much better, I'm afraid. Well, then I shall leave you to alone for a little while. But Joshua, only a few moments. He's not up to visitors. Of course, absolutely. Are you certain that you cannot ride in the carriage? I can make a marvelous bed for you in the back thick with blankets no. and the fresh air would no, at the conference people could come to you. I was thinking we could arrange an area. No. Joshua, this is bigger than one man. This is God's power. Hundreds of pastors have awakened. You do not need me there. Yes. Of course. You're right. will be in my prayers. Thank you. Are you absolutely certain? Go. Go now. <laughs> Joseph Bates, as I live and breathe. How long has it been? Too long, Brother Himes, too long. <laughs> well, I have heard much of your work on temperance with the Christian connection, but you have made quite the name for yourself speaking on the evils of slavery as well. Am I but a humble servant, Joshua? God speaks and I obey. Ah, nonetheless, your reputation is well deserved. 
Is it true? Brother Miller could not make it? Yes, uh, typhoid fever. It, it is more than a shame. Oh, oh, Brother Bates, may I introduce you to Hiram Edson? Uh, you may know uh, Brother Edson through Pastor Finney. Oh, yes. Brother Finney's work on the causes of temperance and abolition are well known. Pleasure to meet you, sir. This is Owen Crozier. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I followed Miller's ideas since I heard him last year in New Bedford. As a sea captain, I've traveled the world, but today I was transported farther than across an ocean. I'm committing myself to the Advent message. I feel the same call, as do I. What is your name, brother? And where are you from? Samuel Snow, sir. I work for the investigator. I live here in Boston. You're not here doing an expose, are you? Uh, no, sir. Now, I will admit, I was a skeptic at first, but I have studied Miller's ideas, and I believe they hold a wonderful truth. The conference is finished, and yet I see the discussion continues. <laughs> I was just telling these good men that I am fully committed. Well, I'm so pleased to hear it. I'll share that with Father Miller when I see him. You may also share that I will put my money into spreading the Advent message. Oh, this is momentous news. <laughs> I mean to stand behind Father Miller and his work, not to start a new church, mind you, but to proclaim that the second Advent is near. So the conference was a success. It came from Maine, New York City, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. So many ideas were put forth. It was a real exchange of thought and enthusiasm. We have many pledges of financial assistance, and almost immediately we will do it again. Next time you will be a part of it, as will Joseph Bates. Bates, I recall meeting him last year. A tall fellow did not use any tobacco. Struck me as peculiar. Well, that he is, but he's going to be very important to us. We will have the resources now. More cities, more printing. Your words will touch many, many souls. Please, Joshua, remember, it is not our work, it is God's. The words of Mr. Miller and his followers are false. Those who are seduced by his candied tongue have no place in this house of worship. So, you must, in the name of the Lord, renounce these radical ideas. If you do not, you will not be welcome here in this house of worship. You may believe you are casting us out, but Father Miller's understanding of Christ's soon return cannot be ignored. We must follow the word of God over the rule of men. We will not keep this good news quiet. And if that means we must leave, then leave we shall. My family feels an unspeakable joy at the hope of Christ's return. We feel love, the love of Jesus. It, it lifts us up, it carries us forward. And it will guide us home.
can they speak to us that way? We must not let one bad apple spoil the bushel. We'll announce their removal from Fellowship next Sunday. It'll be an example. Our traditions must be honored. On this holy day of communion, I would leave you with a charge to love the Lord your God with all your heart, to keep all of the commandments of God, and honor Him by keeping His Sabbath holy. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to Him. Mother. Mother, no. If you must, but we're new here. Keep in mind that we are outsiders. Elder Wheeler will be interested in what I have to say. No. Sorry. I wanted to talk to you specifically about a commandment that's in the Bible. Yeah. Well, I'm giving it a lot of thought, particularly about that Sabbath. Yes, Mrs. Preston. According to Scripture, God said that it's in the He heard what I had to say. He really listened. And will he change his day of worship from Sunday to Saturday, as the commandment suggests? He was impressed by what we shared from the Bible. Meaning, he promised that he'd give the idea much thought and he'd investigate Morning, the idea Mr. more Preston. fully. Hello. And from that statement, you declare victory. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is the Lord's Sabbath. That is just so. Mother. There are those who believe that waiting for the Advent and Judgment Day is mm. of greater importance than which day we worship. Good morning, lady. Perhaps the day won't matter shortly. I've planted a seed. As a teacher, my dear, you of all people should understand how knowledge grows. <sighs> I'll take your copy, lad. Well, you have to give them credit. I do look very handsome. Why do they insist on making me so fat? So, how many people do you expect? It's the largest tent ever erected on American soil. It's been expanded to seat 6,000, and they are assembling plus more. Giant tents, what next? I'm the last person on Earth who saw this coming. I think you were one of the first. We must be on our way. There is a smaller meeting taking place. I wish to stop there first. But the giant tent, we are expected there. Joshua, the world is filled with expectations now. Not everything follows an exact plan. I told Brother Bates I would join him. But he should be at the big tent, too. Whoa, whoa. I'm looking for Joseph Bates. Do you know where I might find the meeting? It is true. 1843 has now passed. Many of you grow anxious. You ask why our Savior has not returned and want to know when will be our blessed hope. I can only tell you that it is in these times that our faith is tested. When I was the captain of a ship at sea, we didn't throw ourselves into the ocean in anguish during a storm. No, we held fast to the moorings. We called all hands on deck. Even now, brothers and sisters, let us not despair or redouble our effort. The bridegroom cometh. We do not labor in vain. Yes. We had hoped that by now our blessed day would have come. And yet these final moments are our most precious. Let my brother speak. 
He comes to us with news. Brother Snow has truth for us from the Lord. Let him come and deliver his message. Our blessed Lord has promised us he will come again to take his people unto himself. Now, when Jesus came the first time, the Gospels tell us the time was fulfilled. What time was fulfilled? Prophetic time. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Historians confirm that Christ died in the spring of A.D. 31, precisely in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. Now, the Bible shows us that spring is the Passover event. The Day of Atonement comes in autumn. And what did the high priest do on the Day of Atonement? He cleansed the sanctuary. Exactly. Thank you, Brother White. He cleansed the sanctuary. Does it not then follow that he will return to cleanse the sanctuary on that precise Day of Atonement? Yes. Leviticus says the biblical Day of Atonement falls on the 10th day of the seventh month. Brethren, we were wrong to expect Christ's return by the spring. According to the Jewish calendar, the 10th day of the seventh month falls this year on October 22nd. We know the date. October 22nd, 1844. He is so certain. And you are not? Setting an exact date is foolish. Yes. No, not now, brother. We, we are not in favor here. Let us hope that God will reveal more in time. The master of the house cleaning out his own barn. This setting of a date must have you upset. Our hope is not a specific day or hour, but that Christ's return is near. What does Joshua think? We both resist. Yet people are demanding clarity. I was wrong about 1843. I should not have counted the zero when counting from B.C. to A.D. And what doubt did I cause amongst the brethren? So you will not endorse a specific day? No, I will not. But Brother Snow's study of the sanctuary does cause me to think. Well, then you must seek the present truth and clarity from God on this, William. The Bible is clear. However, Samuel Snow is a trusted brother in the Lord. I'll give his date over for study and prayer. My wife and I are pleased to have purchased your property. If you don't mind my asking, where will you and your wife go from here? To heaven. But if the end of the world does not come to pass, you have a plan. The Lord has a great design in store for all of us. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, even the house is sold to finance the message. Children believe we are foolish. <laughs> but you were so firm in your conviction. Yes, my dear. The clock is ticking. God's appointed time is almost here. You seem to have regained your appetite, Ellen. It's just happiness to see you this way. We're almost home. Just the thought gives me strength. Until then? We must do everything to let as many people as we know the good news. Ah, Mr. White, I have your pamphlets ready for you. You people are turning into my best customers. Oh, good morning. So you two are working to spread the good news? Yes, sir. James White with the Christian Connection. 
pleasure to make your acquaintance, Brother White. I'm Robert Harmon. That'll be $1.20, please. Thank you, sir. Time is short. Shall we go together, young man, and see if we can make a difference? Of course. Good luck, gentlemen. Young man, our Lord and Savior is returning in two weeks. The coming of the Lord. Please, gentlemen, Christ returns in two short weeks. Prepare your hearts. Oh, well, tell him he's buying the next round when he gets here. I'm sad for those men. You, sir. Coming of sir, the Lord. please. Thank you, my brother. Sir. October 6th, 1844. Dear Brother Himes, after much study and prayer, I see a glory now in the seventh month, which I never saw before. We are almost home. Glory, glory, glory. Come to Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain, and now lives that you may live. Obey his word and believe. There is no time for delay. Put it not off, I beg of you. No, not for a moment. Do you not want a house made with hands eternal in the heavens? Then seek first the kingdom of heaven, says Christ, and then all of these things shall be added unto you. My ship sails tomorrow and my decision is final. I will not stay here and beg. Will you stir up at the skies? Jesus is coming tomorrow, my son. Well, when he arrives, tell him he can find me on the high seas. Joseph, please, go after him. Our son will be lost forever. Do something. Holy Father, these final moments before you return, heal our broken family. Have mercy on our boy. Return our son to us, so we may meet you together. It is so fitting that we should all be here together in these last hours. We did our best, sir. Did we? We are too early. Gentlemen, free ale till the end of the world.
Well, it's too bad the good Lord Jesus couldn't join us tonight. Because we've always got room for one more. <laughs> God's message was never meant to be about a single date. All is not lost. Look at the movement you have begun. You have won thousands. And to what, Brother Himes, have I won them? Disappointment, despair. To the truth of God's word. Sending a date has now made that appear untrustworthy. Why was I so weak to endorse one? Keep waiting. For how long? For as long as it takes. Fable, Esther. Hiram, no. Don't say that. There is no reality to our fondest hope. Oh. What are we to do? We need to pray. Brothers, will you join us to pray for guidance? Guidance? Open your eyes, Hiram. But this is the time that we need to be together. We have been deceived. Do you suggest that we continue in this delusion? If you would just give God a chance. I did that already. How you have blessed us as we have waited upon your return. Our hands have healed the sick. 
Our hearts have been lifted by the sight of so many others believing in you, in the hope of your great return. Lord, we have not lost our faith, but we seek wisdom to understand why you have not returned. We need you to show us the way forward. Accept our prayer, Father, and send us your light that a great disappointment may be explained. All these things we ask in the name of your loving Son, Jesus Christ. Come, brothers. Surely God has not forsaken us. Owen, come with me to the neighbors. Surely they must feel the sting of his sadness. We should all find comfort if we share in this experience. Of course. answering our morning prayer. It gives light to our great disappointment. The early Christians thought that Jesus came to set up an earthly kingdom, not a heavenly kingdom. After his death on the cross, they were bitterly disappointed, just as we are now. Clearly we got the date wrong, Hiram. No, Dr. Hahn, I think the date was correct. Why is the Savior not returned? Maybe we were wrong about what was supposed to happen on October 22nd. The early Christians got the date right for the Messiah, but their expectation was wrong. Perhaps the same is true for us. Daniel's prophecy states that at the end of the 2,300 days, the sanctuary will be cleansed. And what if we mistook the meaning of the word sanctuary? But the sanctuary is the earth. Is it? Daniel says in chapter 7, And behold, one like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days, not to the earth as we believed. So where is the Ancient of Days? In heaven. After his death on the cross, Jesus became a high priest, and the work of redemption moved from the earthly sanctuary to the heavenly sanctuary. That would make sense. In the light of what it says in Hebrews chapter 8, and we have such a high priest, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So Jesus is still coming back soon, then. We just don't know how quickly. Exactly. And it's there in the most holy of places that his work of cleansing takes place. What have I done? You have spoken from your heart and from the Bible. Words that have softened thousands of others' lives. And will they harden their hearts again? Perhaps. And it's also possible that Brother Snow will again arrive on horseback with a, another selection of dates. What is really important about the message God gave you? That is what you should be thinking about. Yes. <clears throat> Hold fast. Let no man take your crown. I have fixed my mind upon another time, and here I mean to stand until God gives me more light. And that is today. Today. Today until he comes and I see him for whom my soul yearns. Peter. 
keep our faith strong in your promises, Father. Though we do not know why you did not come, still we pray that you will do so quickly. For our loved ones who have given up the Advent hope, we ask a special measure in your mercy. Give us insight, oh Lord. Ellen! Ellen! What's wrong? I can't tell. Ellen! 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 I am the messenger of God. Look again, a little higher. Not the end, but the beginning. I was so worried, I thought we'd lost you. I saw things. I was taken to another place high above this world, and I, I, I heard a voice. A voice spoke to me. Who spoke to you? Ellen, I was praying for you. Was it my voice you heard? No. I think it was an angel speaking. I've never heard anything like it. She must have bumped her head, the poor dear. I saw the Advent believers walking on a path toward the heavenly city, and as long as they kept their eyes on Jesus, who was leading them to the city, they were safe. You are safe here now, Ellen. This world is so dark. I have seen a greater world, and it has spoiled this one for me. I feel as if my strength was renewed today, Elizabeth. I saw such wondrous things. I heard things. So you claim. Elizabeth, I've never lied about anything. I'm not saying you're lying now. You collapsed from your illness. You are not of sound mind. You know not what you speak. No. Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit showed me the view of the midnight cry, and he explained our disappointment. He encouraged our advent hope. There were people who didn't listen, and they fell off the path. You had an accident when you were young. It left you weak. You won't have a regular life, Ellen. We understand that. You won't marry. You won't be able to contribute. But this is hardly a way to get attention. Why are you speaking to me like this? I pledge to you that I'm telling you the truth. Well, here's my truth. Christ will not return to Earth anytime soon, and I am done with prayer groups. But Elizabeth! No, you heard what I said. Consider me someone who's fallen off the path. fuss about Jesus not returning in October, it seems to me that I am alone in my commitment to worship on the Sabbath. Ah, but Mrs. Preston, I fear there are no churches here that meet on Saturday. Hmm. If only Elder Wheeler in Hillsboro were closer. Mother, please. The Farnsworths have been so generous to let me stay here while I teach. You'll likely offend them. What is offensive to God? is that we worship on the wrong day. Good Elder Wheeler understood that Saturday, Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is written in the commandments that we should rest and keep it holy. What difference does it make to God if we should worship him one day or another? Difference enough, William, to chisel it onto stone and send it down the mountain with Moses. Sabbath comes to us as a gift. We cannot stop or change it. He even used the word remember. Even if Elder Wheeler's church were nearby, he's a Methodist, and we belong to the Christian brethren. His denomination matters not to God, only that Elder Wheeler believes they're called commandments. If these were but the 10 suggestions, we may feel free to honor God whenever we please, or not at all. Oh, the carriage is ready. 
We may be headed to worship on the wrong day, but we shan't be late. Along with the others gathered here, I too was greatly disappointed, even ashamed that Jesus did not return last year. I do not understand why he did not come, but I still believe in the many promises in the Bible that one day he will. That is why I hold fast to the Advent hope. Thank you, Mrs. Cooch. Does anyone else desire to speak today? I choose to cast my lot with those who keep God's holy Sabbath on the seventh day each week. From this day forth, I pledge to keep the Saturday Sabbath as God has commanded us to do. And I too shall be a Sabbath keeper. From this day forward. I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and rested on the seventh day. You have my word. I will return with fresh enthusiasm. Spending time with Reverend Wheeler is what I need. What we need is a way out of this predicament. We're penniless, Joseph. Where is all the Sabbath business going to lead you? I'm following my heart. I'm being convinced by the word of God. I know no other way to test error from truth. Elder Wheeler has shared the scriptures with me, and I found much peace that he is right. Christ kept the seventh day. Following him is most important. I support the Sabbath. And what of this girl? The one having visions in Maine? Hmm. Well, I venture to make no opinion without seeing for myself firsthand. However, I would say she is doubtful to me. Quite doubtful. We're here today, people of many faiths, gathered together because of our commitment to Jesus and our acceptance of the Bible as the word of God to guide us. This morning, a member of our community, Ms. Ellen Harmon, has been asked to speak to us. She will share some of what God has blessed her with of late. Ms. Harmon. I was in prayer at the house of Mrs. Haynes in Portland. I lost consciousness and I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. I rose high above the dark world, and I looked for the Advent believers, but I couldn't find them. A voice, an angel, said to me, look again, and look a little higher. I then saw a straight and narrow path far above the dark world. The Advent people were traveling on a path toward a bright and holy city. There was light behind the believers, which the angel told me was the midnight cry. The angel confirmed that Father Miller's message was light and that this date was the beginning of our journey, not the end. And all were safe who kept their eyes fixed upon Jesus, who was leading them to the holy city. 
some grew weary. The city was a great way off and that they had expected to enter it before now, but Jesus would encourage them by raising his right arm from which came a wondrous light which poured over the Advent band. And as it did, they shouted, Hallelujah. But Brother Sergeant, if Miss Harmon's visions are from God... Her visions do not come from God, Mr. Nichols. But my friends, how can you be so sure? Brother Otis, if Almighty God had a message for his people, would he choose to send it in such a frail mouthpiece? The girl can barely walk. <laughs> she stands yea high. Her father is a hat maker. She doesn't come from any kind of ministry background. Brothers, our Lord Jesus himself warned us, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I have heard the visions overtake her, like a trance. I'm acquainted with a neighbor. She found her to be credible. Have either of you seen the young woman? No, and we shall not. Ellen Harmon's visions are a lie of the deceiver. Mm -hmm. She would not dare to have one in my presence. Aye, she could not, Mr. Robbins. The power of our faith would bind the devil's work. She speaks with great tenderness of the word of the Lord. Did you speak with them? Are they persuaded? If only they would meet Ellen. I believe they'd be convinced of God's truth. Invite them here, then. Sergeant Robbins? No, Ellen. She travels with her older sister, Sarah. Invite Miss Harmon here. But what would Robbins and Sergeant say? We must let our friends hear her words for themselves. She will minister hope to their hearts. If Ellen's message is of God, no opposition from Sergeant Robbins will drown her out. It's such a joy to have you with me today, Sarah. There's no place I'd rather be, little sister. So many are anxious to hear you. I would be just as happy to stay home and take no part in this. But you grow stronger every day. You've said so yourself. It is true. But I do not want to add to our family's burden. Oh, Alan, do you not realize that the message God has given you lifts up our hearts and spirits? Have you had a chance to meet the Harmons yet? Brother White, I said, have you met the Harmons yet? I've had tea, sir. Thank you for asking. Why don't you go meet the ladies before you get any more tongue tied about it? <laughs> what a pleasure to meet you again, Miss Harmon. You might remember I'm James White. I'm a pastor with the Christian Connection. I've made the acquaintance of your father. We distributed pamphlets together before. Well, it's a pleasure, Mr. White. I've heard many good things about your work for the Lord. I have heard such a thing before, yet it comes as a true surprise to me. Is it wrong for me to ask your age, Miss Harmon? I will be 18 on my next birthday. And you, Mr. White, how old would you be? I'm 23 years old. And you have put yourself in the service of the Lord? Yes. I left teaching to spread the word. <laughs> Welcome. 
Welcome. Welcome. We are so honored to have you here with us. Thank you. The honor is ours. Surely this humble, gentle girl is no child of Satan. Mr. Sergeant, Mr. Robbins, what a happy surprise. We thought we might impose upon your generosity and lodge with your family tonight. I prayed that you might meet Ellen Harmon, and God has answered my prayers. Come in, come in. The Harmon girl is here? She arrived a few days ago to share with us. Uh, Mr. Robbins, um, we have forgotten to, to visit your sick friend. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I have a friend. He's sick, and we had made a previous commitment. You cannot come in. Just for a few moments of introduction? Not possible. No, with deepest regrets. <laughs> if you cannot stay, uh, I could bring Miss Harmon to worship with you. This Sunday, we could take her to meet you in Boston. We would not uh, allow. Uh, uh, why, yes, that, that sounds like a fine plan. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Bring the young Harmon woman to Boston. We will uh, meet with her on, on Sunday. Traveling mercies, my brothers. We shall say a prayer of healing for your friend. I am the messenger of God. Go to Randolph. Follow the light before you. Morning, Ellen. Did you sleep well? I... Well... What is it, dear? Tell us. We are so grateful for your hospitality. I know that you feel that we should go to Boston. But I have been instructed to go to the township of Randolph. Tis nothing in Randolph for you, unless you desire a new pair of leather boots. Do you need new boots? I would love new boots. All I know is that I have been instructed in vision by the Lord. We must go to the Thayer home in Randolph. But to what end? Help us, Ellen. We do not understand. Nor do I. I have only enough light to see the step before me, and that is to go to Randolph. God has promised me that when I arrive there, he shall reveal why. Why, it's the Nichols. What brings you to Randolph? The word of the Lord. We have Ellen Harmon and her sister Sarah with us from Maine. I, well, we, what can I say? Welcome would be a start. Oh. Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus himself warned us, beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, for inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Our brother Otis Nichols and his wife Mary have brought guests, Ellen Harmon and her sister Sarah. But you said they wanted us in Boston. It's clear they do not want us at all. Well, uh, 
Brothers and sisters, as I was saying, the Lord impresses upon my heart that we should adjourn. Uh, after luncheon, we shall continue to speak God's word. Before you arrived, they carried on for some time about Miss Harmon. They said that her visions came from Satan. Ellen Harmon can speak for herself. It's all so confusing. I, I do not know what to believe. Mr. Sargent said that she would not dare have a vision in his presence because he walks uprightly. And Mr. Sargent told me just a few days ago for me to bring Ellen to meet him and Mr. Robbins today in Boston. And what has brought you to Randolph? Ellen had instruction from God last night. Oh, when shall I see Jesus and reign with him above? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning? And from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning? Oh, shall glory crush out mount above glory. the sky? When I hear the trumpet sound in... Glory. Glory. Let's sing. Oh, shall glory for us shall hear... Stay clear of her! Let us read from God's word. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, for I, the oh, Lord, be quiet, you fool! You're bowing to an idol. Don't you see? You are worshipping a golden cow. I have heard that visions from Satan can be stopped by placing a Bible on the person. Here, you place it on. No, no. Oh, very well, I will do it then. This is the inspired testimony of God. Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but to the end thereof are the ways of death. She quotes from the verse beneath her finger. Hallelujah. Shall I read it for you, my dear? Brother Miller, although a stranger to you, I have desired to write you a few words. I have always believed that God called you to preach the definite time of the Lord's coming in 1844, and that it was just as it should be. And if the time had not been preached then, the church and world would never have been effectually warned. I have enclosed part of a vision of Ellen Harmon of Portland. I fully believe that her visions are from heaven. Sister Harmon has been a resident in my family home much of the time for about the past eight months. The Spirit of God is with her and has been seen in a remarkable manner. I would ask you 
to lay aside prejudice and suspend judgment until you have read and compared them with the scripture and present truth. Yours waiting for the return of the Lord, Otis Nichols. Hmm. Brother Nichols sounds sincere, but surely they're just grasping at straws. The Bible says that in the last days, some will receive visions from the Lord. Soon we shall see our smiling Savior's face. Of that I am certain. Yet another letter? Fanatics are out there spreading all kinds of nonsense to the people. In this you mean Ellen Herman? From all reports, she is sincere, a true believer. But I'm alarmed about these so-called visions. They say her longest vision lasted four hours. But visions? Condition of her poor health is more likely the explanation. Will you seek her out? Well, she's invited to speak now with regularity. I'm certain our paths will cross. Joseph, I don't have enough flour to bake even one loaf of bread. How much do you need? At least two more cups. Not searching for Jesus, are we, Mr. Bates? I think he went that way. No, wait, maybe over there. What can I do for you today, Joseph? Just some flour. However much this will buy. This is our evening supper. What is that? Do we have any jam or apple butter? Not unless you pick some up while you're out. Prudy. Spent the last money I have on earth to buy that flower. First, the farm to the Millery cause. Then our friends and family to scorn us. Our son to the sea. Now all of our money is gone. How much more of this do you think we can take? You must pray. The Lord will provide. Joseph, please. I have you nothing more to offer? Perhaps the earth should swallow me whole. Is that what I should pray for? mail for me, Mr. Drew? Oh, yes, Mr. Bates. As a matter of fact, I do. There's a five cents postage due. Sir, I do not have the money. You can bring it in when you see fit. 
That would be wrong, sir. I have not five cents to my name. Joseph, I'll take your word that you'll find a way to repay the debt. Matthew, if you, if you would open it, I would be more comfortable. send you this in the name of the Lord. When you deliver these goods to my home, my wife will say you've made a mistake, but they are no mine. Certainly, Captain Bates. husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. James White. Congratulations. Ellen White. Okay. Has a lovely ring to it, don't you think? Yes, it does. The name fits you well, Mrs. White. <laughs> I'd always imagined this moment in a church. But we have none to call home. What Brother Bates writes here stirs my heart. Indeed. Everything he affirms is supported by scripture. Well, he traces the Sabbath back to its creation and then reminds us it is at the heart of God's Ten Commandments. If the early church kept the seventh day as a Sabbath, then we shall cast our lot with them. It is clear that in the final days before Jesus returns, the keeping of the commandments will become a significant issue. John in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, describes a people who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. In the last days, these people are to become the objects of Satan's wrath. In chapter 14, verses 6 through 11, John describes God's last warning message to be given to the world before Jesus comes, symbolized by the messages of the three angels. Verse 12 tells of the people that will take that message to the world. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. It is not one or the other. Jesus himself says in the gospel, if you love me, keep my commandments. Thank you and bless you, my brethren. That was truly inspiring, Brother Curtis. We are so delighted to have you and your new husband here, Sister White. The Lord has shown us the truth in Brother Bates' message on the Sabbath. Glory to God. Mm. Ellen, give Sister White some room. 
twinkling lights. Stars. As many as the sands upon the shore. Look upon the glory of God's creation. Often, in fact, she's healed. The thing she spoke of tonight without ever leaving New England, I, I spent 20 years at sea to learn the half of it. You have been one of her loudest critics. Until now, Brother White. There's no way she could have known about the stars and the planets she described tonight except that God showed her. You can count me in the camp of her strongest supporters. I studied the Sabbath with Brother Edson and Brother Crozier in Port Gibson, then traveled on to the Curtis home in Topsham and met the White. Did Mrs. White have one of her fainting spells? I was wrong to doubt her, Prudy. She had a vision right in front of me. I believe God is using her to confirm the truths he is revealing in our study of scripture. I still have my doubts. Perhaps reading my written account will better explain. You're going to write of her visions? Yes. And on the seventh day Sabbath. This is all Miller's fault. Has anyone seen old William? I think he started this madness. Uh, there were lunatics long before him. Not anymore after. I hear he's been ill. It doesn't leave his farm. I'd say a prayer. But then I'd be a hypocrite. Why don't these disappointed Millerites just go back to the churches they came from? Some of them have. But the others wouldn't go back even if they could. Most of them still believe that Jesus is coming at any moment. Still setting dates and searching the skies, I hear. Poor William, what a shame all his hard work has come to this end. But at least he and that Heinz chap had an organized movement. I mean, this is just... A mess. There's no leadership, no churches. I hear there's a young woman having visions in Maine and a sea captain holding prayer meetings on Saturdays. Saturdays? Well, that's one mob I won't be joining. Bates is printed about the Sabbath again. But how did he have the money? I, he didn't. We shall have to raise funds to pay the expenses. How will we get seven dollars and fifty cents? work so hard to study God's word and yet I still cannot understand the scriptures that you and the others wrestle over. I feel as if I am always on the outside looking in. Ellen, when we come to an impasse, God gives you envision and the clarification from his word. But when I am not in vision, it is as if my mind is locked to understanding the scriptures. This may be a blessing. Perhaps God is protecting you so that people cannot falsely claim our message is based on your visions instead of on God's word. We have already attended three gatherings in search of our Bible truth. Must we go to Connecticut for this conference at the Belvins? I think it would be wise to attend. But we have no money for it, James. 
I'm to be paid next week for cutting wood. I expect ten dollars for my labors. I cannot mind my child and travel, James. I cannot. Our father has called us to this work. He will never leave us nor forsake us. some very passionate discussions this morning. We must keep our heads. So many of the signs of his return that Jesus gave to his disciples in Matthew are being fulfilled around us today. Agreed. And we've made much progress. Four years ago, who would have imagined worshiping on Saturday? It is true. Common ground can be found when we come together. We keep the commandments not to be saved, but because we are saved. Exactly. As Jesus said, if you love me, keep my... If you love me, you'll wait till everybody's ready to eat. Bates. <laughs> <laughs> <Face. laughs> you and Ellen have spent so much time traveling to spread the word, but you cannot be everywhere. And neither do we wish to be. Leaving our son behind each journey makes the wagon light, but our hearts heavy. The Lord has shown me a way that we can reach the Advent believers without having to travel so frequently. We must establish a newspaper. But Brother Bates believes that we should put our efforts towards pamphlets and books, not to an ongoing paper. Brother Nichols, two paths are but one. We have no quarrel with his approach, but my husband is prepared to start immediately on a periodical, as books often suffer neglect on the shelf. Where will the funds come for this? Well, let the paper be small at first. As our people read, they will send means by which to print. From a small beginning, God has shown me that this, this little paper will go round the world. How much did it cost? $652 a Season. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hiram Medicine paid for it? Yes. But word has gone out in the review and already funds are coming back to pay the loan. It's a miracle. Yes. And news of miracles travels fast. Roll up your sleeves. Because our work has really begun. They should call this paper the messenger of deception. This article is filled with lies about God's work. They have poisoned many hearts, James. Good men whom we once published in the review now misinterpret scripture, spreading error. Here's more bad news. In Wisconsin, the meeting tent has gone missing. We cannot allow this. We cannot stop it. We are not organized. We have no authority. <coughs> <coughs> We must find a way to treat your lungs. It's another letter from John Andrews and John Loughborough. That can't be bad. Read it. They're both exhausted. Brother Andrews labors all week to earn a living. His eyesight is going. His voice is nearly lost from preaching on weekends. And I wish those were our only troubles. What do you have to tell me? The landlord has sent a notice regarding next year's rent. $14.50 a month. What are we to do? We could move. To Vermont? Some have suggested Michigan. You would pack up and go west? We have visited before. You yourself said the people were so kind. The Battle Creek brethren want the responsibility of publishing. Battle Creek? Hardly sounds inviting. <laughs> Haven't you been battling most of your life? It could suit you well to live in such a town. Is that so?
The sisters are bringing over mattresses and a table with two chairs. The building down the street has more room for the boys to run about. The first house of worship will be ready in a few weeks. Thank you, Uriah. You are a blessing to our family. Before I go, I, I borrowed some money to get several cakes of maple sugar, two bushels of wheat. Oh, we will pay it all back. Little heed is given to the Bible, and the Lord has given a lesser light to lead men and women to the greater light, the Bible. I do not ask you to take my words. Lay Sister White to one side. Don't quote my words until you can obey the Bible. I exalt the precious word before you. Our position and faith is in the Bible. I want you to know I put our house here in your name. I will not hear such talk. Mm -mm. What choice have you now but to listen? <coughs> if you rest, your health will improve. I have deeded the house to you. If God should bid me rest in my grave, I will not leave a widow with three children and no home. I will not. I have faith that the Lord will not take you from us. There is much work left for you to do, Mr. White. We can now count more than 2,000 believers. Helen, I have tried to make this work, No, but... you have succeeded. We shall continue to wait upon the Lord. <laughs> Ownership must be taken out of the hands of the individuals. I alone own the printing press, Brother Belden. That is not right. And I own the land the church is built on. Under whose name should it stand? No one man's, I think. Brother Andrews has made the suggestion that we need not organize legally as a church, but we could be incorporated under the laws of Michigan as an association. An association? The earliest of all Christians were set up as such. The discussion must be had. We shall call a conference to meet here in Battle Creek. An agreement must be found even if we have to sit until the Lord returns to do so. Do I have a motion to create a publishing association? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, Aye. under the laws of Michigan, we cannot incorporate a publishing work until we choose a name. Brother Andrew is right. Yes. Gentlemen, let us not back down from what we have spent the last two days resolving. This child of ours has been created and is now so grown that it is exceedingly awkward to have no name for it. We have been called the people of the shut door because we believe that the door to the holy place was closed and the door to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary was open. Should that be part of our name? Whatever name we choose, it should not be objectionable to the world at large. We've had two days of discussions. And yet you are no closer. Progress has been made. I, but there are still objections. It's important that everyone be heard, James. Yes, John Herbert, especially you. 
Our fourth son is perhaps the loudest. Now where would he get that from? Gentlemen, brothers, come to order. I say we call our association the Church of God. Others have that name already. And doesn't that sound a bit boastful? Tis the case. Perhaps we should look to our two pillars of faith, the Sabbath and the second coming of Jesus. What do we say to being called the Seventh-day Adventists? Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we call ourselves Seventh-day Adventists. Yes. Aye. Aye. The infection spreads and I can do nothing. Only pray. Our poor son is hot as fire. Twenty-nine days ago, we lost our baby boy, John. I understand now the grief of King David when he lost his child. My son, my son, would God I had died for thee. And yet I I cling to the Father's promise that all things work together for good to them that love God. But I come before you today, January 12th, 1861, to tell you that I have been shown in vision that more states will join South Carolina in a secession and a terrible war will result. I saw large armies raised by both North and South. I saw the battle raging. I heard the booming cannon, the dead and wounded falling on every side. And I was taken in vision to the homes of those who lost brothers, sons, and husbands in the war. And there are men and women in this house today who will lose their loved ones in the days to come. This war will be fought over slavery and the stubbornness of those who refuse to see the truth of God. The law requiring us to return a slave back to his master, we must 
never obey. Now, therefore, I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, by virtue of the power in me vested by the Constitution and the laws, have thought fit to call forth and hereby do call forth the militia of the several states of the Union to the aggregate number 75,000 in order to suppress said combinations and to cause the laws to be duly executed. This war is a terrible tragedy for our nation. That it is. I wish man would heed the word of God. How's your health, Brother White? You need more rest. Today, six local conferences voted to form a general conference with John Byington as our first president. That fact alone steadies my step. God's work can truly move forward without hindrance. The Lord leads and we follow. Yes. And the doctor says it's pneumonia. Are you certain? Mother, thank goodness you're both here. Resurrection. God will do all things well, my son. I cannot bear it. To lose sweet baby John three months after his birth. It was as if we had only borrowed him from God, but this. Mother, I will meet you in heaven. I know you will be there. Still, you were writing. It seems months you've been at that desk. I understand it better when I put the ideas on paper. It was a vision concerning our health. Will you read me some of it? The heart of the message received is the connection between caring for our souls and our bodies. So many of us are nearly used up in our service of the Lord. I saw that tobacco in any form is a slow and malignant poison. But this often said tobacco has healing value. I am only telling you what I've seen. <laughs> Alcohol, tea, and coffee are to be avoided. Continue. We should dispense of meat and return instead to the diet of Eden. Grains, vegetables, nuts, fruit. Did the Lord really show you that? <laughs> How are we to live without meat? It gets worse. Uh. 
Rich cakes and sweet pies are to be avoided. <laughs> You'll have the butchers, the smoke shop owners, the saloons, all after us now. Oh, the bakers, too. Oh, there's more. Our body requires pure water, exercise, and clean air. <sighs> Caring for our health is a spiritual matter. I have seen that it is sacred duty to care not only for our health, but to teach others how to care for theirs. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with this nourishment and this delicious meal. In your name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Edson, why don't you eat? Because he's full of all the food he shouldn't be eating. Now, Willie, stop trying to get your brother in trouble. Our focus should not be on a list of bad foods. It is more important that you understand your body is the temple of God and you must treat it accordingly. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Father, will you pass the onions? James! 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 Father! James! Boys, go get the dog, James! James! Hey, hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. James, look at me. Your husband has had another stroke. He's already much well, improved. No, don't try now. You have facial paralysis. It's common after this kind of incident. Tell me now what we must do. Well, rest is the most important thing. Lots of it. And then I'm in favor of bloodletting. Bloodletting? I don't think that that is an option. The barber on Main Street will receive my instructions. He has the proper instruments for the incisions. Draining blood is known to be the most effective treatment following stroke. We shall consider that avenue once James is well enough for such a procedure. You are not a physician, Mrs. White. Now, I'll be back in the morning. Stroke is a powerful thing. You are lucky to be alive, Mr. White. Thank you. Boys, please show the good doctor to the door. I have put two sons in the ground, Mr. White. You are going nowhere. The good Lord has borrowed the use of your right side to see to that. He will find the best way to bring you back to good health.
Today we inaugurate the Western Health Reform Institute. We have only to look for inspiration in this project at the progress in health made by our dear brother James. Sister White, using principles given her and vision by God, has demonstrated that we have much work to do. Moving forward, health care will be a principal concern for our church. I have seen that complete rest alone does not bring healing. It needs to be linked with exercise, diet, and faith in God. And many of you already know the importance of water, using fruit, grains, nuts, and vegetables. What we eat is of paramount importance. And these plans are not only for healing, but for prevention. May God bless our obedience and give us the inner strength to continue his work of spreading the good message of the second coming to the world. B-O-U-R-D-E-A-U. -E Brother Loughborough and Brother Bordeaux have got to California, but where are the others who will say, Here I am, Lord, send me? We should not turn away those in need. Education and healing go hand in hand. How can we heal the body and leave the mind to waste? Jesus spent much more time healing than he did preaching. It is true. We need more able workers. Yes. We must train more young men for service. Our young people begin work right after grammar school. There should be a way to give them a better education. I could use a little help stack in this wood. Thank you kindly. I'm Bell. Good little Bell. How did you get stuck chopped in this wood? I'm not stuck, Master. States. He's George States. I'm Edson White. Chopping wood's good for my health. My wife died last year. And I stopped caring for my health. Sorry to hear that. But, but how does chopping wood help? Instead of being dosed with compounds, I've learned to use my limbs outdoors. And now you're here doing chores? Sharp mind's as good a tool as a sharp axe. What did you do before you came here to chop wood? I was a teacher for many years, then a school inspector. I met a fine man at the Health Institute this week. Hmm. His name was Goodalo Bell. I believe I've seen him. Yes, he arrived in poor health with frayed nerves. Chopped wood for better than an hour. Hmm. Yes, exercise and being outdoors is a wonder for good health. After we talked to him, George and I got to thinking. Mm -hmm. About chopping wood? No, Willie, about going to school. Teaching is the most precise work ever assumed by men and women to deal with youthful minds. The greatest care should be taken in the education of youth, to so vary the manner of instruction as to call forth the high and noble powers of the mind. John Harvey Kellogg. William K. Kellogg, George States, 
Edson White, William White, is the world. since the death of our pioneering brother, Joseph Bates. And 30 years since God raised up this pioneering people. In my most recent vision, the heavenly messenger said, you are entertaining ideas that are too limited for this time. Your house is the world. We have just placed many resources into publishing signs of the times. Yeah. What of our plans for the Pacific press? Have we sent brothers Lofbrow and Bordeaux to California at great cost, only to have them stretch across the ocean? Where's the money coming from? Surely our resources are better used here, at home. Your house is the world. We are to hold forth so that all may have an opportunity to receive the truth. The message we bear is a worldwide message. It will go in power to distant Oregon, to Europe, to Australia, to the islands of the seas, to all nations, tongues, and peoples. Order. <clears throat> How can we question this duty? Souls are perishing and may now be reached. Brother Andrews, I move that we take up the issue at our general conference in August. We shall put to a vote expansion into the foreign field. In order to expand, everyone will feel the stretch. Sure. They're sending Brother Andrews to Switzerland. <laughs> An adventure on the high seas. How Brother Bates would have loved that. Indeed. We feel confident that the Lord is leading us. Well, travel safely, Brother Andrews. You will be in our family's prayers. Step. Farewell. We will spread the good news of Christ's soon return to Europe. And beyond that, we must tell the world. We have nothing to fear for the future unless we forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. <laughs> <laughs>